Hello everyone. It is Christmas Eve day, 12th December on uh, 2020. And because it's 2020, I'm stuck in Oxford for Christmas. Honestly, not the worst place to be stuck at. Uh, but I decided since I'm already here, I might as well make a video about it. Uh, show you around Oxford on Christmas Eve. Um, talk to you about some history. Behind me is the River Thames. It has been raining for two days now, so it's a bit, the water level is a bit higher than usual. Uh, but let's look at these cyclists trying to cross the bridge right there. Having a good old time. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're gonna start off a bit outside of Oxford where we are right now, next to the Thames River, and go into the center of town. Bridge we cross, there's some building happening over here because uh, there's a historical landmark here. I don't mean, I don't really think much of it, but apparently it is. You see this weird kind of what is it rhombus shaped thing that is a swinging bridge so basically there used to be a railroad track going through all these houses that's the part of the railroad and then here this is a river path for river boats so you couldn't have there wasn't enough money to build an actual bridge over it uh, so what they did during the Victorian era in the 19th century, they built a swinging bridge that would rotate, connect with the actual railroad, train would pass, it would rotate back, and ships could go over. Uh, since it was built in the 19th century during the Victorian era, it is considered a historical landmark, so it is being restored right now. Uh, I'm sure there are some train enthusiasts out there that love this thing. I don't really think much of it, but, uh, you know, it's kind of fun. This entire area around here, these old new buildings, are built on two things. Later, the railroad, but first of all, there used to be an entire abbey here. Uh, it was established in the 13th century by um, the Normans, and it was built right next to the river. This is called the Castle Stream, because it's the stream that goes around the Oxford Castle, or used to. Uh, and uh, it was also it formed also part of the moat of the castle when it came there but here it was just a stream uh, that an abbey was built around uh, there isn't anything that is left for the abbey the abbey was destroyed in the 16th century during the destruction of the monasteries since was it uh, since Henry the eighth uh, since Henry VIII, uh, you know, separated from the Catholic Church and he was to raise, he wanted to raise some funds and since he had now control over all the monastic institutions in England, uh, he started this uh, dissolution of most of them. And uh, this abbey here uh, was one of those institutions. Uh, actually, fun fact, before the abbey was destroyed, uh, which was all around these grounds, uh, they petitioned to be acquisitioned by the University of Oxford and made a college in the University of Oxford, but this was denied and the abbey was destroyed. University of Oxford bought up, uh, bought a bunch of this land, uh, and they uh, basically later on built the Said School in the 19th century, uh, 20th century. Uh, here you have the this is the stream that is called the Castle Mill. After that is another steam for river boats. There's like a little footpath in the middle. And after that, those buildings in the background sticking through the trees is the Worcester College. What colleges are at Oxford, I'll explain. But first, uh, Rowley Abbey. Uh, the Abbey from the, uh, what was it, 13th century? Yeah. Was destroyed. But there's one part of it, there's only one part in Oxford that remains, everything else was dismantled and used for everything else, and something else, and the only part that remains is this wall. This is the Abbey's eastern wall on the side of the river. It now houses Green Templeton College uh, accommodations, 
and this is the only wall and gothic gate that remains from the abbey you can see there used to be like heads here it's like eyes mouth on the side of the arches but now it's just a gothic gate the way you can tell gothic gates from romanesque ones is there's a point at the top so they're not arched completely there's always a point but yeah let's continue down the footpath towards the center of oxford actually while we're walking i could tell you some more about oxford as a city it was established somewhere in the early medieval periods uh, by the germanic tribes that came into the british isles uh, it just shows you how overflowing the Thames is today. That usually doesn't happen. You can see a nice view of the river walk. But yeah, Oxford was established in the early medieval period. It, it became a vital a strategic point between the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms of Wessex and Mercia. Uh, the, the city was established because this was a good site to ford your oxus. Oxus being the animal, ford being the process of trying to get through the river Thames or any other river, but in this case the Thames, and therefore it gained the name Oxford because it was where the farmers would ford their oxen across the Thames and then continue on towards London uh, to sell their ox, basically. Hence the name Oxford. Actually, if we're going by Old English standards, it would be Oxenford or something, but I'm oversimplifying here. The city was also sacked a bunch of times during the early medieval period by the Danes, which uh, the Angles retaliated with uh, with their own killings of the Danes later on, which we'll talk about. That will come up. Honestly, it is a very nice day at Oxford. Look at that sun and the steep of Nenefield College in the background. Uh, that tower. We're going down Worcester Street. Worcester is another college of the University of Oxford. This is its wall on the left side here. The building behind me is the building, uh, is the main building of the Worcester College. We sadly cannot go into any of the university buildings today. Uh, the college has a stereotype of being a, an artsy college since uh, people like Emma Watson, Gemma Chan, Ellie Kemper, Russell T. Davis were all, uh, are all alumni of the college. Uh, but I'm sure that's just a stereotype. There's a lot of uh, university stereotypes about colleges that really aren't true. This is the Ashmolean Museum. It is currently closed. It is. It was, when it was open in the 17th century, the first public museum in Britain. It is owned by the University of Oxford, operated by the University of Oxford, and it houses uh, basically everything the University of Oxford uh, happened to accumulate over the centuries of existence. Uh, accumulate is kind of a nice word for that, but yeah, it is a very nice museum. It has a bunch of stuff. It is built in the neoclassical architecture, uh, which you can tell easily by the fact the, the columns have no main supporting value, no, add no supporting value to the building. Also, they're not really columns, they're just like kind of protruding away from the building. Uh, they're Ionian columns, which you can tell by the fact that they have like that weird circle thing at the corners. Uh, and the Ashpolian was basically, uh, was trying to be built as the Parthenon. Uh, especially when you go inside, you see a bunch of mosaics at the top uh, depicting like fights with centaurs and stuff like that, uh, which is also on the Parthenon. And all the way at the top, if you zoom in, you can see the crest of the University of Oxford right there in the middle. So this building right behind me is St. John's College. It is the richest college at the University of Oxford uh, by assets. It is 
over half a billion, I think. Also, uh, going back to the Danes, as I promised, during 2008, uh, when they were building a bunch of buildings at the back of St. John's College to expand it, uh, they found a bunch of Danish skeletons uh, that were presumably part of the massacre that was held here by um, the King of Essex to retaliate for the Danish raids on Oxford during the early medieval period. It's a fun fact. There is also a myth about St. John's College that it is so rich and it owns so much land that you can technically walk from Oxford all the way to London without leaving land owned by St. John's. I don't know if that's true, but that is the local legend. This right here is the Eagle and the Child's pub, which is the pub where C.S. Lewis and Gerard Tolkien were uh, known to hang out a lot. They had a literary, literary group organized at Oxford, so they hang out with them. So there were a bunch of other li uh, literary writers that hang out in that pub, but uh, the Eagle and the Child is mostly known for C.S. Lewis and Gerard Tolkien. They used to have lunches here, dinners, I used to hang out here a lot, drink beer. A lot of beer probably was drank in that pub. Uh, go for a beer. It's kind of cold though. Let's continue. This building is called the New Inn and it dates back to the 14th century. And it's a great example of the architecture you would have seen everywhere at Oxford during that time. This street is called the Turl Street. On the left side, there's the Exeter College. On the right side, it's Jesus College. And on the left side, past the little street, uh, is Lincoln College. And that church spire all the way in the back is the Lincoln College Library. It used to be the All Saints Church uh, that dates back to the 12th century, but it was later given to the co Lincoln College to use as a library. We're now going down Bracenose Lane. It is going into the center of Oxford. I'm surrounded to my right, uh, Bracenose College, to my left here, Exeter College. And this is what we are walking towards. Uh, in the background, you have All Souls College, the most prestigious college in the world. Perhaps. Me. Behind me is the gate of Allsouls College. Allsouls College is a funny college of the University of Oxford because it is the hardest college to get into. You have to take a bunch of entrance exams some of which used to be in ancient Greek or Latin, now you can either take ancient Greek or Latin or a STEM exam. Uh, so, because beforehand it, it uh, basically was in favor of the classicists or the historians who had to study ancient Greek or Latin, um, so they made also a STEM test instead of ancient Greek or Latin. You can still take an ancient Greek or Latin test though. Um, there's also a bunch of other tests about critical thinking, general knowledge, etc. Uh, oftentimes, All Souls College doesn't admit anyone some years. There's just zero uh, admittance to the university because, well, if you're not good enough, they just, if there's no one good enough that year, they just won't take anyone. All Souls College usually takes like three people a year, and some years they just don't take anyone. Uh, if you are part of All Souls College, you automatically get funded into, and you can get funded any kind of research you want. You get an office in that building for the rest of your life, and you're also automatically, even if you're technically a graduate student, you also automatically become uh, a fellow of the university. Not just alumni, but also a fellow. Uh, so there's a bunch of perks to try to get into that college over here, which is part of the University of Oxford, but uh, unless you're a genius, you're probably not getting in, or really good at bullshitting, which honestly, <laughs> I bet in the hundreds of years or something, someone has got into the All Souls College bullshitting. Uh, maybe not. Well, but yeah, it is the most prestigious college here at Oxford. And since there's no one around, uh, I think I'm going to talk some about colleges. So everything around us is owned by colleges or the University of Oxford. The best way to explain uh, the colleges and the University of Oxford, that's the old Baldwin Library, is by saying that it is a kind of federal system. So imagine you have United States, which is made out of a bunch of states. 
So you're first the citizen of uh, Washington State, and then you're the citizen of the United States. Same thing with the University of Oxford. You're first the resident and the student of a particular college, let's say All Souls, but you're also part of the whole University of Oxford, which is kind of, again, a federal system. So the university provides like the graduate education, the doctoral education, the teachers, the study space, and the examination. But the colleges provide everything that um, requires anything social. Uh, you're basically kind of part of a house, like in Harry Potter. And they also provide uh, studying. Uh, like they have tutors that will tutor you, uh, that will be your basically teachers until you go to an exam at the university. But this was this is only during the undergraduate or some specific graduate programs here. And the uh, old door of the old Bodleian, you see a bunch of crests of the various colleges. This is the entrance to the old Bodleian library. It is the main library of the Oxford University. It's currently closed and for students, uh, but you can see the main quad in the middle, kind of. Uh, I'll post a video of how it actually looks like. And this is perhaps the most photographed picture of uh, Oxford. It's considered the center of Oxford. Uh, this quad or center or whatever you want to call it has pretty much not changed in the past at least 300 years it has kind of looked the same apart from the cars but everything the buildings pretty much still look exactly the same this in the middle this building in the middle is called the Radcliffe camera it is it is probably the most photographed uh, building in Oxford. It's also part of the Bodleian Library. Inside there's a library, people can study, the students can study there and get a bunch of books. It's part of the uh, Historical Faculty Library. So if you're looking for medical books, they're not in there. But historical books, like for me, they are. Uh, fun fact, there's a uh, there's an underground tunnel going from the Radcliffe camera to the old Baldwin library right here. Right here on the ground there's a tunnel connecting them with a bunch of books and study space as well. So as you're walking around here, there's students literally studying under your feet. This behind me, probably the second most photographed spot on campus. Campus. Actually doesn't really have a campus, let's just say uh, in the city is the uh, Bridge of Sighs. Uh, it is part of Hertford College and it is called the Bridge of Sighs, at least there are one Jinkos, it is called the Bridge of Sighs because uh, one day student got a particularly uh, bad test that he thought he did really badly on and as he was crossing from one side of the college to the other on it, he very audibly sighed in disappointment. Uh, that is at least the story. This ominously looking street with a gate at the end is the New College Street. It is, um, yeah, it's the street that is owned by New College. We're surrounded by New College, all these walls from New College. New College is interesting. It was built on a site that was derelict due to the Black Death in the 14th century. It also is the only site in Oxford that still retains the old city wall. It was because when the uh, college was built next to the city wall. They struck a deal with the city council to take care of it and To this day the city council uh, goes to the wall every year to see if the wall is being taken care of Because the contract never ended it was put in perpetuity, which means forever um, uh, Yeah, the reason why the college ended up with the wall and all the stuff like that and anything about the early history of the University of Oxford which was founded circa 11th, late 11th century, although it is kind of hard because back then it was just a bunch of scholars teaching with no centralized governance. But yeah, if you want to learn all of that, uh, link somewhere in the corner into my early history 
of the University of Oxford and the entire Oxford intellectual movement. You'll learn a lot about the history of Oxford and about the stuff I'm... Well, uh, history of University of Oxford and about the stuff I'm talking about here. But for now, we're just gonna walk down this very ominous lane. Those are the spires of All Souls College. From the back here, that uh, Victorian looking building is the library of the of Queen's College. And uh, what do I have about Los Vodas is one of the nicest libraries in the world. Uh, at least the old part of it. And uh, Queen's College is the college where Rowan Atkinson went to. That's all. That's all we have for this college, I'm sorry. So behind me is the Merton Cathedral. Well, actually, it's the Merton Church. It, it was supposed to be the cathedral, but during building it, Merton ran out of money. And so Christ Church, which is a college down the block, decided to build the cathedral instead. Uh, Christ Church is the richest college by endowment, not assets. St. John's the richest college by assets. Uh, there's also the entrance to the Merton College right there. Funny thing about Merton College, they have a tradition that during daylight savings in October, uh, they drink during the time when the clocks uh, change. Uh, they go to the main quad of the college and drink port at the, every corner of the main quad while also making a circle and going backwards. Uh, they say that saves the earth since they're uh, correcting the time for <laughs> for the time that is being changed or something. Uh, it's just an excuse to drink and I had a friend who did it multiple times and says the day afterwards is not as fun as the day during <laughs> the actual uh, partying because you drink before you actually do the ceremony since the ceremony happens at like midnight or 2 a.m. whenever the clocks officially change. So that's Merton for you. Uh, Merton is also known as uh, the college where all the nerds hang out because it is um, consistently at the top of the tables for the highest grade point averages of its students. It is also where the Merton calculators used to hang out in the 13th and 14th century which uh, discovered many mathematical um, discoveries. Uh, they just got lost because the Black Death came and killed many of the calculators and there was no continuation forward. Uh, if you want to know more about the Oxford uh, intellectual movement and stuff like that in the, early, in the middle Middle Ages, uh, go watch my video. I already posted it somewhere. This is the examination school. It is where final exams are held, but it is also where during the term some classes are held. When you take your exams at Oxford, you have to wear your full subfusk, which is kind of formal uh, gown clothing. Uh, you also have to wear a flower. You wear a white carnation at the, your first exam. You wear a pink carnation during the exams in between. And you wear your and you wear a red carnation on your last exam. Well, the examinations after you finish your last exam, you're supposed to have your all your friends here as you get out of the examination school, or or here, or even on the high street, which is like the main street down there. And uh, those friends should party with you right away. <laughs> so you finish your final exam, you come out, you have friends that probably already finished their exams. Uh, and they give you beer <laughs> or any kind of alcohol, uh, throw stuff at you, which historically could have also been poop and dirt, now it's mostly just confetti, and uh, you just party with them right away as you get out of the examination school. That is the tradition, although the university is trying to crack down on that because a couple of years back there was so much partying that High Street, the main street down there, got completely filled with students partying and uh, they blocked the traffic. So.
and with the white spire in the background is the Sheldonian Theater. It is the main theater of the university. It is where matriculation and graduation happens, which is all in Latin. And when you have to do the matriculation or graduation, you wear your uh, gown with uh, a black suit and a traditionally white bow tie, but I believe it can be black now as well. It's the front of the Sheldonian Theatre. You can see that Sheldonian Theatre is surrounded by these heads. That one. There's also a bunch above me right there. And these heads are not known what they're for or who they're supposed to represent. People think they're supposed to represent the old philosophers like Socrates, uh, also the Roman ones like Cicero, etc. But it is actually, it was never defined what they're supposed to be, at least as far as I know. Uh, but they could be just scholars guarding the main theater of the university. So this is the covered market. It was built in the 1770s. Uh, it was built because Oxford never really had any kind of centralized market, uh, like for example Cambridge or other towns did. Uh, when the market day came, uh, you basically just had people showing up with their carts and horses into whatever street in Oxford they wanted to and set up their shop and that's where people used to shop and it created giant smell and dirt and everything because uh, well you had people with carts and horses that pulled those carts and you had butchers outside and, and it was just a terrible smell and people at some and people in this um, 18th century couldn't take it anymore so the city council and the university both together funded the creation of the covered market uh, in the 1770s. From there it expanded, it was kind of smaller and then it expanded, expanded, expanded. Uh, and uh, back in the day it looked much different. The stalls were all wooden, they weren't uh, like neatly made into boxes as they are today. Um, but uh, yeah, this is still where uh, you can buy local products, fish, uh, um, vegetables, whatever. You can also buy the Oxford sausage here, which apparently is a special kind of sausage. Uh, never had it, no idea how it tastes like. Uh, but you can also buy coffee here, even on Christmas Eve day. And we're back where we started. At the Thames, uh, the Thames River Walk. The sun's kind of out at this point. Uh, I'm gonna go home and edit this video.